Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Black Oak Baptist Church. Trust and pray that you've had a great week in the Lord. We're going to uh, start our service by lighting our candles this morning and honoring all of our soldiers. I'm going to ask you to do something a little special this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand. Our pastor is going to come and open us up in a word of prayer this morning. We're going to, don't want to forget, 21 years ago this day, our nation was forever changed, and we want to remember that, remember all those people who made the ultimate sacrifice, and our pastor is going to come and speak to that, and so we want to honor that this morning. Pastor. Amen. Would you bow your heads in a moment of silence this morning before we pray, not only to remember those serving today, but to remember everyone that lost their life 21 years ago today. Would you bow your heads in a moment of silence, and then I will pray. Father, we thank you for this day that we have to be in your house. Lord, I thank you for the mercy of God that's allowed us to come this morning. And Lord, this morning we want to bow in a moment of silence, God, to remember everyone that lost their life, Lord, uh, that were selflessly laying their life to the side, Father, to try to rescue others 21 years ago today. And Father, I pray that you'd be with every family, God, that today is grieving over what happened to their loved ones, Father. And I pray that you'd bless those families today. Father, I pray for our military personnel that's actively serving right now, Lord, that has given us the freedom to be here today that they're fighting for. And Lord, I pray today that as we come to this place to worship in just a minute and then get in your word later, Father, I pray that you would help us to step out of the motions and the routines and just to, Lord, open our hearts up. Help us to be unashamed to worship you today in spirit and truth and father i pray that you would do what i can't do what nobody else can do that you'd fill this place with the holy spirit of god or that you'd fill our hearts that you'd clean the uh, trash off of our wells today that our hearts could spring up again and god remembering everything that you've done for us lord we love you this morning and god we thank you you're the only reason we're here and help us to acknowledge that today in jesus name i pray amen You can just remain standing if you want to. Follow along the screen. Our first song is Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Ain't no better way to start the day every morning, right? Get up early in the morning. I like to get up about 4 o'clock in the morning and have a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> but I don't like to get up, but I get up. I get up that early, right? Hey. was lost in sin, but Jesus took me and in a little I from hell and filled my soul. It made my heart in love and broke my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. Yeah. 
next song as great as our faithfulness. You know, we just have to stop and think about all the greatness that God's done for us, right? And how faithful He's been, and everything we, and every step of life that we walk and talk about. Amen. Lift His voice up this morning. Great is our faithfulness. Tommy and Brother Rocky are going to continue to play. You step out, just turn around, shake someone's hand, make them feel welcome. We'll dismiss Jesus' kids out the back door.
we'll dismiss Jesus kid Miss Leslie start out the back door with them we'll dismiss them out the back door this morning make a little change here Brother Rocky's going to come to the piano our choir's been practicing this song and we'll probably mess it up but I'm going to tell you uh, Jesus what a wonderful name uh, you know our, our preacher has talked many times that Muhammad's dead and Buddha's dead but our Jesus was alive right Conquered the grave, rose from the third day, coming back to get us one glorious day. Jesus, what a word. Listen to the words of this song. What a beautiful song. We might mess it up, but it's all right. We're going to sing it anyway this morning. Jesus, what a wonderful name.
Amen. Bless his holy name. Are you thankful for the name of Jesus? That was mighty weak of you. I said, are you thankful for the name of Jesus? You ever just think about where you'd be without him? You'd probably be in the lowest part of hell right now. He didn't have to do what he did, but he loved you enough that he did it anyways. That's enough to worship him this morning. If you couldn't shout to that song, something's wrong in your heart or your wood's wet. He's the only one that witnessed and conquered the grave. He's the only one that got up out of the grave after he paid for my sin and your sin, and he's worthy of your praise this morning. Amen. Anybody have a song or testimony before I preach this morning? Anybody? Turn your Bibles to the book of Nehemiah with me, if you will, please. The book of Nehemiah, chapter number 4 this morning. That is before the book of Job and before the book of Psalms, if you need a little help finding that today. In your Old Testament, the book of Nehemiah in the fourth chapter, God has burdened my heart greatly this week with uh, this message and uh, about things that are going on in our world right now just tie completely in to uh, the text this morning. And, and Nehemiah, to give you some background, Nehemiah was one of the brave godly men who led a return from Babylon back to Jerusalem and uh, you know from previous studies and sermons out of the book of Ezra that Zerubbabel led the first return back to Jerusalem and they built the altar first, they built the foundation and they built the temple of God back. You know that Nehemiah leads a return to rebuild the walls and Ezra leads a return and exhorts the people out of the law of God to remind them about who their God is and can I just say I believe that song just reminded us this morning of who our God is and Nehemiah in chapter number one if you want to just look with me for a second I'm not going to read any but in Nehemiah chapter number one we looked Wednesday morning in our prayer meeting that Nehemiah had a burden and he had faith that took action can I tell you this morning what the church needs is a faith that takes action because a faith that does not take action is not faith at all according to what James said that uh, to be a doer of the word and not only a hear Nehemiah had a burden in chapter number one Nehemiah had a burden in chapter number two that he was the king's cupbearer and the king saw him he said Nehemiah you've never been sad in my presence what's wrong with you and Nehemiah told him in Nehemiah chapter number uh, two verse three that uh, the city walls and the gates are consumed with fire in that day they could rebuild the temple they could have everything but if they did not have the gates to guard the city they had no protection they had no a way to defend against the enemy Nehemiah had a burden but Nehemiah did something about that burden in chapter number two he said to the king I need you to let me go in chapter number three all I, I want you to go take some study later you have some trouble pronouncing all these names but in Nehemiah chapter number three it was a collective effort to rebuild God's city would you stand to your feet with me this morning for Nehemiah chapter number 4? We'll begin reading in verse number 1. That Now they have started building the walls again. Nehemiah is back in Jerusalem. They are back building the walls. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible said, But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burnt? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Nehemiah said, So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together under the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then were they very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Verse 10, 
And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, They shall not know neither see till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places when she shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore set I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places I even set the people after their families, and with their swords and spears and their bows, their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be ye not afraid of them. Remember the, of the Lord which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren and your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses. Listen to verse 15. It came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God brought their counsel to not, that means to nothing, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his own work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of the servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them with the spe- both the spears, the shields, the bows, and the haberjons, and the rulers were behind all the houses of Judah. They which built on the wall, and they that bear the burdens with those that ladded, every one with his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so built it, and he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall from another." In what place thereof ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same time said I unto the people, let every one with with him, his servant, lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may guard us and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that every one put them off for washing. You can be seated this morning. Thank you for standing. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Jesus, that your name is the name that's above every other name. And Lord, I thank you that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Lord, I believe one day that Sanballat and Tobiah will bow their knee and confess Jesus is Lord. I believe that the devil himself will bow his knee and confess that you are the King of kings. And Lord, I know there'll be a day that all of us will stand before you. And Father, I know this morning, just as the work was for Nehemiah, it was very great and very large, and they had to labor in the work. God, so it is in this day and hour to be a Christian. And Father, I pray today that you'd not only help us to see contextually what Nehemiah faced, but that you would help us to make application in our lives of the things that we are facing, of the evil that we are facing in our world today, right now, in this moment. But Father, I pray that all of us would do what they did and we would put our hands to the work. Father, I pray we would not let the threat of the enemy cause us to leave the job today. Father, I understand that there's a lot better people that you could have preached this morning. And God, I don't have the ability to do it. But Lord, I just ask you to set me aside, bind the enemy from this place. And Lord, would you preach to our hearts this morning. And God, may we respond to you accordingly. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Nehemiah chapter number 4 is a lot of reading today, but to understand where we are. So Nehemiah has returned to Jerusalem. He has charged the people in chapter number 3. They are now rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. If you read the book of Jeremiah, when uh, Jeremiah was prophesying and he told all of uh, the southern kingdom of Judah in that day, he said, Babylon is coming and they will overthrow you. There was no way out of it because of their sin and their disobedience. He had already pronounced the judgment. In fact, Isaiah, long before it happened, had already pronounced the judgment of what would happen to the southern kingdom of Judah. And you remember that Jeremiah encouraged them, he exhorted them, and he said, if you will surrender to Babylon, they will carry you away. But after 70 years, God will bring you back, but the temple and the walls will stay intact. But Jeremiah said, if you resist, they will destroy and they will burn the city with fire. That's exactly what they did. They locked Jeremiah up more than once. They told him to shut up. 
up. They told him he didn't know what he was talking about. Every time they said, do you have a word from the Lord? Jeremiah would tell them the same exact thing. By the way, can I tell you this morning that this book never changes. God's word is still true today as it's ever been. And they didn't obey God and the gates and the fire. And they destroyed the city. So Nehemiah is in charge. He, he was not commissioned to rebuild the walls. Nobody came to him and said, Nehemiah, go rebuild the walls. But some of his brethren came into Shushan the palace where Nehemiah was ministering. By the way, he was in the palace ministering. And he asked of his brethren in Jerusalem, a land that Nehemiah had never saw, that he had never set his feet on before. But he knew that it was God's city. And he said, what's it like? And they said, those that are there are in great derision and the walls are burnt with fire. And Nehemiah said, I've got to do something about it. Can I tell you today that everything around us is crumbling. Our world is facing things we have never seen before. I, I, I don't mean to jump on any kind of train, but uh, Brother Ralph sent me something the other day and I started to watch it. Uh, that on the TV premiere channel FFX that uh, Disney Channel's put out a show now uh, where Satan uh, uh, laid with a woman and had the Antichrist. and It's not even hiding anymore, but it's in everything that our children are watching and that the youth are watching. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. The devil's not even hiding anymore. It's a great fight this morning. Nehemiah and his men, they faced opposition. Can I tell you, that's the burden that God's put on my heart to preach this morning. That if you and I are going to actively try to build the kingdom of God, God has not commissioned me and you to go to Jerusalem and build walls, but he has commissioned me and you. And Matthew 28, 19 and 20, that if you are a born again child of God, we are to put our hands to the work and build the kingdom of God. Jesus said in Luke 9, 62, that no man putting his hands to the plow, what does that mean? Putting his hands to the work and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Nehemiah said, I'm going to do this because God is worthy. We should serve God this morning, not for somebody else to see what we're doing. Jesus said, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. But we should serve God this morning because he's worthy to be served. Because he rescued us from a place called hell. And to me, that's enough to face the opposition. Nehemiah gets to Jerusalem. And I want you to look in verse 1 of chapter 4 again. As soon as he sets his feet on the soil, in chapter number 3, he, he, he goes around and sees all of the different gates that have been burnt with fire. And in verse number 1 of chapter 4, Sanballat was the enemy and Tobiah was the enemy. And when they heard that Nehemiah built the wall, he said that he was wroth and took great indignation and he mocked the Jews. If you look at chapter number 2 and you look at verse number 10, it says when Sanballat the Hornite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. And if you look over there in chapter number uh, 17, 16, 20, all of these servants, all these verses show uh, uh, that Tobiah and Sanballat, they were wroth that somebody come to build the walls of Jerusalem again. Why is that? Uh, because they had taken over that area. They were building it for their self. Uh, they wanted it to be under the reign of the king. Uh, and you can read in chapter number 1 uh, that King Artaxerxes would stand up uh, and he would stand with Nehemiah. He would give him letters that the governors would give him the wood and the materials that he would need. Can I say this this morning? If God sends you to do something, even if you face the opposition, he'll pay the bill for it. Uh, it's not you that's responsible for it. It's you that's responsible for being obedient to him. And faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Can I tell you Revelation 12, 12, uh, uh, talking about the end times. Young people, listen to me. Uh, uh, talking about the end times. Uh, it said that the devil has come down having great great wrath uh, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. Uh, uh, can I tell you it's serious this morning uh, uh, the fight that you and I are in uh, it's not a football game that all of us probably watched last night uh, it's not a, a golf tournament that we're going to play in this Saturday brother Roger but there's souls on the stake uh, uh, there are people dying and going to hell in this very moment uh, and it's time that you and I as the church uh, wake up and realize the enemy that we're facing uh, is not a man uh, like Nehemiah faced. Uh, uh, there was somebody behind a uh, sand ballad in Tobiah, but you and I are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places, not against flesh and blood. Uh, can I say it's time we quit fighting against each other and against our spouses and our homes uh, and that we fight against the enemy that all of us are facing this morning. He's come down having great wrath, for he knoweth he hath but a short time. 
Can I tell you that Satan knows your Bible better than you do? He knows my Bible better than I do. And he knows what's coming. He knows that there's coming a day when he'll gather his army against the armies of God. And God's army will come down and his enemy will fall as dead before him. And the snap of his finger, Satan will be destroyed. He knows the things that are coming, the things that are going to happen. But he is fighting against us today, trying to take down the church while he can. But may I remind you of what Jesus said to Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know what Nehemiah didn't do in chapter number 4 verse 1? When the enemy came... He didn't say, well, I'm going back to Shushan the palace. He fought against the opposition of the enemy. In verse number 2, he spake unto his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews, that's Sanballat, he said, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones of the heaps of the rubbish which are burnt? And then verse 3, that Tobiah the Ammonite was by him. And he said that even if a fox will go up and walk on these walls, that they'll fall down. Can I tell you that Sanballat and Tobiah did not know yet who the God of Israel was, but they were about to learn who the God of Israel was. So in verse 4 and 5, Nehemiah prays again to God. In verse number 6, I want you to look at this. He said, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together under the half there, for the people had a mind to work. You look over in Acts chapter 2, you look in the first verse of that chapter, the New Testament church has begun, Pentecost is about to happen, and it says that all of the disciples... All 12 of them at this point, Matthias has replaced Judas. They have all uh, set their mind to work in one mind and one accord. Nehemiah's men were not divided internally, but they were willing to fight externally. You and I as a church this morning need to be uh, on the same mind, in one mind and one accord. We've got a common goal this morning, and that's to rescue the perishing. Is that your goal this morning? to tell people that there's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, that that's the reason I'm at church this morning. Why are you at church? Did you come for something else or did you come to worship the Lord Jesus Christ? This is the place where you and I come as a pastor preached the other day and those doors are where we exit to serve to tell people about Jesus. Can I tell you if we're, and this is what God's barred and burdened my heart with. God's been doing some things around here. Have you noticed it? Just look around at how full the pews are. Just go look, ask Judy for the church records. And I'm not boasting in us, I'm boasting in him. That in the past year to date, 20 people have joined the church. That last Sunday we got in the baptismal waters. That a few months ago we got in Big Ridge and we baptized about 10 people. Uh, that our young people are sitting on the front row serving God. They're about to go on some more conferences. That our youth directors are leading them in the admonition of the Lord. I'm just saying God's doing some things around here. I, I, we, we shout just a minute ago, praising God for what he's doing. But please hear me this morning where God is is working the enemy's going to stick his nose in the business uh, and it, as one mentor told me one time that if we allow him to get his toe in the door he's going to rip the door off the hinges and you and I need to set our minds this morning that we are going to work that we're going to serve the Lord uh, that we're going to battle against the spiritual wickedness in high places that we're not going to run for the hills when it gets hard I'm not talking about hate speech uh, I'm not talking about being ugly or disrespectful but I'm talking about what Nehemiah told his men to do in verse number 14 where he said fight for your brethren and your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses parents there's something to fight for today husbands there's something to fight for today uh, uh, that we're facing a real enemy that's pulling a generation to hell with him and it's time we put our hands to the work uh, it's time that we stand up uh, it's time that we don't shut up uh, it's time that we tell the world uh, that we believe what this Bible says uh, and we quit running every time the enemy barks at us uh, but that we stand up. I know who my God is to you this morning and he knows who he is because one day there was a knock on the door of hell and a nail scarred hand brother Roger said give me the keys he is the king of kings he is the lord of lords he's the great I am he's the lily I feel like preaching this morning he's the lily of the valley he's the bright and morning star he's the sweet rose of Sharon Jesus what a wonderful name he's bigger than the devil this morning and it's time that you and I remind him of that. Anybody sick and tired of being sick and tired? Anybody sick and tired of what's going on in our nation right now? Anybody? I turned on the news the other day just to watch the coronation of the new king. 
I, I, we don't even have cable no more, but Haley discovered thousands of channels on a Roku TV, so I was watching the queen passing away, and you know what she said? She said, I wish Jesus would come in my lifetime that I may lay my physical crown at his feet, uh, but can I tell you, when she stepped over Jordan, she laid every spiritual crown down at his feet. Uh, as she had it figured out what she was living for, and it's time that you and I figure out what we're living for. Uh, uh, have you noticed what's going on? Uh, I, I wish I would have lived in the days uh, where there was a tent and sawdust trail on every corner. Uh, I wish I could have lived in the days of Billy Graham uh, and Mordecai Ham and Billy Sunday. Uh, my, what would it have been like uh, uh, to preach to those crowds that day? Uh, but I'm realizing that just like the, they told Esther that she is in the palace for such a time as this, uh, I'm realizing that God has put you in these days and me in these days for such a time as this. We are experiencing the birth pains uh, of the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, if you can't see it today, you're spiritually blind. Uh, that your Bible is more accurate than tomorrow's newspaper and that any moment now uh, I'm not looking for a sign. I'm listening for a trumpet. I'm not looking for the undertaker, Brother Don. I'm looking for the upper taker to open the skies and to take me out of this place uh, and knowing that I don't have long left to minister, it ought to cause us to put our hands to the work. Can I ask you this morning, what are you doing for the kingdom of God? Not what are you doing in this church. It's, it's needful. It's needful that we serve. Why are you doing it? Well, are you putting your hands to the work this morning? Look in verse 7 of chapter 4. Are you all okay? It said, but it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and the breaches were being stopped, began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. The enemy was mad. He was wroth in verse number 1. Did you notice that? He was wroth when they started to work for God. But when they started to make some progress for God, it said there that in verse 7 that he was very wroth. Can I tell you, when you surrender your life to serve God, he's angry. But when you start actually serving God, he's real angry. And that preacher, I can't figure out why the devil won't leave me alone. Then obviously you're doing something right. Thieves don't break into empty houses. The devil's not coming after those that he's got sitting right where he wants them to. He's coming against those that are doing something to warn lost sinners that Jesus is the only way to heaven. He's doing something against those that are ministering to the broken, to the widows, to those that have no hope. He's trying to stop you and I from serving God. That's what Sanballat and Tobiah did. You, you, you can go on and read Nehemiah. It's, it's a very, very good study for your Christian life. In chapter number 6, uh, Sanballat and Tobiah start false rumors about Nehemiah. They send false letters to the king about things that Nehemiah's not doing. And you can look in chapter number 6. I, I, I didn't mark the, actually I did mark the verses. Verse 13, uh, Sanballat and Tobiah, uh, the Bible said, Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid. They were hiring men, setting false letters against Nehemiah. It said in verse 19 that Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. Can I tell you what the enemy was doing to Nehemiah? Trying to make him afraid of what he was going to do. Can I tell you what the enemy does to you and me? Tries to make you and I afraid of what he can do. There's been times I've sat in my desk over there and the devil don't like me telling you this and before I came to the pulpit, he said Matthew, if you go preach, I'm going to kill your entire family. But I had to make something up in my mind sitting in that desk that God is bigger than the enemy and that if I just do what God tells me to do, he'll take care of everything else. There's been times the devil said, Matthew, if you go do that Everybody's going to think you're a fool. Uh, and I just tell them, let them think I'm a fool. I'm a fool for Jesus this morning. Let, let, let them talk. I'm going to serve God. And it's time that you and I quit letting the devil use fear against us and quit using the discouragement against us. Uh, Paul told Timothy, God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Anytime you're afraid, it's not from God. It's from the devil. Do you know that we have a real enemy this morning? Anybody faced that enemy, that spiritual warfare. He said in verse 8 that they conspired all of them to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Satan wants to hinder the work of God this morning. You remember Paul told the Thessalonians, I believe the church at Thessalonia, I believe it was them that he said, I meant to come and to hinder, to minister to you, but Satan hindered us. Can I tell you that the devil wants to hinder the work of God this morning? But aren't you glad that God's on our side? Verse number 9, Nehemiah said, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God. 
The enemies come. Nehemiah didn't say, all right, I'm going back to the palace where I can have all I want to eat, where I don't have to worry about any enemy. I'm going back to Shushan where they've got an army that will guard me and the king will protect me. Nehemiah said, nevertheless, I'm going to pray to God and I'm going to work anyway. I don't think some of y'all are with me. Verse 9, he said, he set a watch against them day and night. The thief cometh, John 10, 10, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. It's time you and I as the church set a watch against him night and day. Daniel prayed morning, noon, and night. And it's time that you and I realize that our enemy doesn't sleep. It's time to realize that uh, Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober and be vigilant. What does that mean? That means to watch day and night because your adversary, the devil, seeketh as a roaring lion looking for whom he may devour. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me today. If you're a born-again child of God, Satan wants nothing more but then to ruin your life, uh, to kill you and to take you out so that he has no threat anymore against God's kingdom. Can I say it like the old pilgrim man of God said it one day? He said, let us not exit this world quietly, uh, uh, leaving with no one knowing. He said, but may all of hell hold a thanksgiving banquet at the warning of our departure that we have left the battlefield. Uh, when you and I serve God and we speak the name of Jesus, we ought to believe it enough that it shakes the walls of hell. Uh, we ought to serve God enough that our picture's hanging somewhere on the walls of hell and Satan says, take them out no matter what they do. Uh, but can I remind you that James said, resist the devil submit to God and he will flee from you Nehemiah resisted the enemy you know what happened the enemy eventually left and the walls were rebuilt they were finished and Jerusalem was inhabited again as God's city it wasn't what it was during the days of David and Solomon ever again but it was God's city again look in verse number 10 Judah said to Nehemiah the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. Can I say this in love? Every church has people that think God's dead. Every church has people that think what we want to do is impossible. Can I tell you that it is impossible? But it's not impossible for God. Do I need to say that again? There's people in every church... Dear minister, dear director, dear teacher, can I tell you that there's people in every church that Satan will use to say, Preacher, there's no way that's going to happen. And sometimes they, they don't always mean it in a wrong way, but those are the days of the past. Uh, revival can't happen again. Uh, but my answer is just that we're still here and that Jesus hasn't come for the church. Uh, so we obviously still have a purpose and still have things to do in this world. The bearers of the burdens was decayed. What does that mean? mean everybody was discouraged uh, they weren't willing to fight the fight again uh, uh, can I say it was a burden for them to rebuild the walls uh, that's what it said there but it's not a burden to serve the Lord Jesus Christ somebody say amen uh, as the old man of God said at one time uh, it's okay if you get weary in the way but it's not okay if you get weary of the way uh, sometimes I get weary in serving Jesus uh, uh, sometimes I get weary in pastoring a church uh, uh, sometimes I get weary in reading my Bible and preparing for sermons but I've never been weary brother Jeff of living for the Lord Jesus Christ uh, because there's nothing else I would rather do than seek to build the city of God can I say we're not building a physical city here in a few months when we remodel this sanctuary God willing we're, we're remodeling a physical building but I'm preaching to the spiritual body that, that th this isn't talking about building this place brother Roger it's talking about building this place this is the church. This is the body of Christ. And it's time that we set our hands to work again. I, I'm moving quick. Verse 11, I want to show you this. He said, Our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. Satan wants the works to cease this morning. He wants to take you and I out this morning. So what did Nehemiah do? He charged the people in verse 14, and he said, Be ye not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. That word terrible doesn't mean he's a terrible God. It means he's a God to be reverenced. He's a God to be feared this morning. You know what Nehemiah said when the enemy came? He said, remember who the Lord your God is. Uh, uh, can I encourage you this morning to remember who the Lord your God is? Uh, anybody remember when he lifted you out of the miry clay uh, and set your feet on a rock? Uh, anybody remember what David said in the psalm that he snatched your feet from the net uh, and gave you a solid place to stand on? Uh, anybody remember the day? 
say that when you were hell bound uh, that Jesus walked into your life uh, and said I'm willing to wash away every one of your sins uh, and you didn't understand it but you surrendered and said Lord I repent be the Lord of my life and your life changed radically anybody remember that day Uh, anybody remember the last time uh, you done gave up on God and said I can't go anymore and then just in time Jesus walked in uh, and he said it's all right. you don't have to bear the burden but give the burden to me cast your care on me uh, because I care for you anybody remember who God is this morning he's a lot bigger than the enemy he's a lot bigger than your problems uh, and he's a lot bigger than your fears today so put your hands to the work again fight for your brethren fight for your sons and daughters fight for your sisters and get back in the work of God today Nehemiah didn't give up I'm hurrying verse 15 it came to pass when your enemies heard that it was known unto us God brought their counsel to naught I'm going to read that again. He said, when it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, God brought their counsel to naught. The psalmist said in Psalm 33, 10, he said, for the Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people as of none effect. What does that mean this morning, preacher? It means that God brought the plans of the enemy to nothing. Can I tell you, when the children of Israel were surrounded at the Red Sea by the Egyptian army of Brother Don, and they were coming to take them. Remember, they was complaining, they was crying. God brought the plans of the enemy to nothing. Can I tell you, when they were standing by the Jordan River and they had no way to cross, it was flood season, and, and the Jordan Rift of where they crossed, the water would be murky and muddy and overflowing, and God brought the plans of the enemy to naught. And he said, just sit, Joshua, just set the Levite priest with the Ark of the Covenant and tell a picture of faith. They couldn't see the bottom of the river, but tell them to step in the water. And the moment that Ark gets over that water, the Bible said that the Jordan River rolled back to the city of Adam. Can I tell you, God brought the plans of the enemy to naught. Can I tell you, when Elisha and his servant were standing on the mountain and surrounded by chariots of fire and all of the Syrians army and that Elisha said Lord open his eyes Uh, uh, God brought the plans of the enemy to nothing he struck them with blindness and Elisha led them into Samaria uh, to their other enemies can I tell you the times uh, that Satan was coming against you and me and he made his threat he was coming to take us out uh, and we called on the God of heaven that he brought the plans of the enemy to nothing can I remind you once again That God is a whole lot bigger than your enemy. That God is a whole lot bigger than the opposition that you're facing right now. And that there's somebody waiting on you to do what God has asked you to do. Look in verse number 17. They which build it on the wall. This is what Nehemiah did. They which build it on the wall. And they that bear the burdens with those that light it. Every one with one of his hands wrought in the work. And the other hand held a weapon. Nehemiah commissioned the people, all right, the enemy's not going to give up. The enemy's persistent in what he's doing. Can I tell you, I I don't give Satan any credit this morning, but he is persistent, Dawson. He will try and try and try again. He'll deliver the same thing in a different package and get us every time with it. Nehemiah said, all right, this is the result. He said, they're not going to stop fighting. We're not going to stop building. Nehemiah said his men, if you read there, he had men that were inside of the wall working on the ground. He had men that were on top of the wall working to build it up. And you know what he said to them? I want you to keep a sword in one hand, and I want you to keep a trowel in the other hand. Can you imagine the work of God that they're laying the brick and the foundation with one hand, and when Sanballat and Tobiah and all of their army comes, uh, that they're fighting the opposition with the other hand. My, what a picture of the church today. Our enemy will not stop until he's locked up in the bottom pit. Uh, Our enemy will not accept defeat uh, until God defeats him for the very last time. Uh, And don't let him out anyway. He's going to keep coming at you. Preacher, when will he stop? When you get to heaven, he'll stop because he won't be there. Uh, So you might as well make up your mind now that you're going to build the kingdom of God with one hand and that you're going to fight the enemy with the other hand. Look at the next verse. He said in verse number 18, for the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, so they built it. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. So Nehemiah sets them first with a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other hand. Guess what? The work got too great. They had to put the sword away. They needed both hands for the work. But do you see the picture? They didn't leave their sword in the tent. 
but they put it on their side. What a picture of the armor of God that Paul told those in Ephesus to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Paul was laying in a prison dungeon in Rome, and he was looking at a Roman soldier when he was writing these words. Uh, and he said unto them, he was looking at that sword hanging in its sheath. Uh, you know what you should have as a child of God with you at all times? You should have the gospel shoes of peace. You should have the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, and the shield of faith. You know what Nehemiah was saying in that picture? The enemy will come again, and when he comes, you need to have it ready. Can I say it to you the best way I know how in my uneducated mind? If when the enemy's kind not, not when he come, if he comes again, but when he comes again, you ought to have it ready. Guess what? When you're in a grocery store, you're probably not carrying your Bible unless you're going to evangelize and preach to the cashiers. That'd be okay. I, I go with you. You probably don't have your Bible when you're driving down the road, do you? Can, can I say? It, it, never mind. I ain't gonna say that. Can I say you don't always have your Bible with you, but your Bible should always be in you. That enemy could re- that, that man could reach to his sword and fight the enemy. I can't always reach this, but it's stored in the reservoirs of my soul, Brother Rick, that I can use it against the enemy. Can I tell you this morning, I, I'm coming to a close. It's time to remember who your God is. It's time to realize that the enemy is not a figment of your imagination, but he's a very real being that disguises himself as an angel of light that is the father of all lies, who is seeking to wreck your family, who is seeking to destroy Black Oak Baptist Church, who is seeking to get your children a wayward path. And it's time to realize that to put your hands to work again, to set your mind and your heart to work for God. It's time to fight for your brothers and your sisters. It's time to remember that God can cancel the plans of the enemy. And then lastly, in verse number 20, but verse number 19, Nehemiah told them the work is great and large. Can I tell you, building the kingdom of God is a great and large work. In verse number 20, Nehemiah stopped. He, he ends his commission with this. In what place thereof ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us, and our God shall fight for us. Nehemiah said, we're spread out all over this wall, and we're fighting against the enemy. Can I tell you, as the people of God, when we leave this place, we are spread out all over this community, all over the surrounding counties, going to work, doing our daily tasks. But all of us are fighting for the same goal, to rescue the perishing, to defend those that are weak and feeble-minded, Paul would tell the church. uh, And what are we doing? He said, when you hear the sound of the trumpet. You know what that tells me this morning? God just showed me this. One day, we're going to be all scattered out, serving in the community, and we're going to hear a trumpet. And if you're born again, you're coming whether you're ready to or not. But if you're not born again, you're going to be part of the crowd that does not make it. He said, our God shall fight for us. Has God ever fought for you? You remember what Moses told him in Exodus 14, 14? Just be still. The Lord your God will fight for you. And the Egyptians which you have seen, you will see no more. You remember what God told the complaining Israelites through the book of Deuteronomy and through the book of Numbers and even in the book of Leviticus through the book of the law. You remember what he'd tell them all the time and what he told Joshua when Joshua was to take over in Moses' place. He said, be not afraid, be not dismayed, be not discouraged for the Lord your God. He it is that goeth before you and he will fight for you. Paul told the church in 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, the Lord shall establish you and keep you from all evil. Can I tell you this morning, in closing, preacher, I I just can't get victory in my life. Preacher, I don't know why, no matter how hard I try, I I, I can't get back in my Bible. Preacher, no matter how hard I try, I, I can't get victory in my prayer life. Preacher, no matter how hard I try, my my ministry is failing. The place that I'm serving in, I feel like I can't bear the burdens anymore. Well, dear friend, it was never designed for you to fight the battle. It was designed to allow him to fight the battle. Brother Tommy and Rocky, you help me close, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed, if you will. No one moving, leaving if you can help it. Just in a way of invitation tonight, can, can I, this morning, can I ask you, Do you feel like you're losing in the battle today? Preacher, I've been fighting at this so hard, and I just don't think I can go anymore. The burdens on my heart, they're too heavy, and they're too great. Dear friend, could I encourage you to come lay those burdens at Calvary? Burdens are lifted at Calvary, and to say, God, I've tried fighting the battles, and I can't. Lord, I need you to fight for me again. Maybe it's been a while since you put your hands to the work. Maybe it's been a while since you've told that lost person about Jesus. Maybe it's been a while since you got out in the community and ministered. 
Maybe it's been a while since you've sung in the choir, come to Sunday school. Maybe it's been a while that you put your hands to the work. Maybe this morning you need to come and you need to say, Lord, I know the opposition is great, but I'm willing to face it in Jesus' name. I'm willing to fight, God, if you'll fight for me. Or maybe this morning you need to pray, Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours again, of what's going on in our community, of what's going on in our world. Maybe you'd come this morning believing in the mustard seed faith that God's still able to send revival. Maybe you'd pray what I've prayed all week. God, would you revive me again? I need it. Lord, it's not my brother, not my sister that stands in the need of prayer, but it's me, oh Lord. Maybe you'd come and say, Lord, our community needs Jesus. Maybe you'd lay your burdens at Calvary today and say what Isaiah said again. Here am I, Lord, send me, use me. God, I want to see a change. Father, I thank you this morning for allowing us to be in your house. God, I thank you for the charge from your word this morning. God, that we face opposition on every side. But God, I'm thankful that you hedge us in on every side. Father, I have no idea to know the needs in this place. But Lord, I do understand what it's like to try to build the kingdom of God and fight the enemy at the same time. God, I pray that we'd fill this altar this morning resolving in our hearts not to live for the things of the present but to live for Christ because that's the only thing that will last. God, I pray we'd resolve to be all in. God, I pray we'd give you our burdens, let you fight our battles, but that we'd just be obedient to what you say. Father, I pray you'd challenge every one of our hearts this morning to draw closer to you. But Father, if there's one here that's lost, God, it wasn't a salvation message, but God, I know you can still speak to them. Lord, I pray that you draw them to a place of repentance this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As you stand to your feet, as Brother Roger begins to sing, I wonder this morning as God spoke to your heart, would you come? Would you come right now? What a friend we Lord, help me get back in the pot. Would you come? Our sins and griefs to What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we offer for men. What needless pain we bear. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Are you this morning? Take it 
Brother Tommy and Rocky continue to play for just a moment. Would you bow your head before we go home? Maybe right there in your seat, that thing that only you and the Lord knows about. It's okay to say, Lord, I'm weak. God, I feel like my strength is decayed. Right now, would you give that need to the Lord? Would you say, Father, I, I need help to continue. I need help to face the opposition. Lord, I, I, I need help to have a burden for what's going on. I need help to have a burden for my lost friends and family. God, would you revive my heart? Would every one of you pray that right now? Lord, revive me again. Fill me with your spirit again. I must decrease and you must increase. Would you pray that right now? God, revive me that this church might see revival. God, revive me that this community might see revival. Dear friend, that's the only way. Are you willing to pray that right now? Would you as I pray? Father, thank you for this time to be here. God, thank you for your mercy and your grace that never fails. God, surely there's opposition today, but God, it's something the church has faced since it started. Father, I pray that we would resolve in our hearts to serve you today. God, to be in a place of service today, to be the light of the world as you've called us to be. And Father, I pray this morning, God, I'll pray it for me first. God, I need revival. I need what only you can do in my heart. Lord, would you revive me again? Cleanse me from the things, from my secret faults, God, that don't please you, that my life would honor you. Father, I pray for every one of us this morning, God, that you would revive us again. Lord, that you'd revive this church again, that we could be the light that is set on this hill. God, that all around us may know who you are. And then, God, would you revive our community? Lord, it seems impossible in the days we're living in, but, God, I know it's very possible with you. Lord, please, I beg you to revive us again this morning. Help us to fall in love with Jesus all over again. And God, help us to put our hands back to the Word, knowing that our labor is not in vain. Lord, I love you this morning. Keep us safe until we come back tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Before I give you some announcements, does anybody have anything on your heart? Revival starts. Anybody ever found yourself in that place? Hey. I, I'll be the first one to say it's me, Lord. When God started preaching this message to me about a week ago, he said, Matthew, you've been a slacker. We all get there sometimes, and that's why we need revival. Amen. Anybody else? Very good. Amen. Amen. 
God bless you, brother. It's very true. Anybody else? All hearts and minds clear? Uh, right after the service, youth, if you want to go ahead and slip out, you can. Uh, you just go over to the education building as soon as I dismiss you. Uh, they're having a bake sale. Go ahead. They're having a bake sale. So if you go over there and, and support them for their upcoming trips and buy some of the goodies that they have made uh, right after they finish that bake sale. Uh, parents, I guess if you just want to be over there in the education building, Kayla and Jamie need to speak to you concerning Hearts on Fire. So you go over there, church directors and committee chairman, your budgets are due today uh, for the 2023 year. You can drop those off to uh, Judy at the church office. We need those no later than today. So if you can do that, there's a deacons meeting today at 5 o'clock. If you can be here for that, and then we're asking for donations, cases of water for our fall festival. Uh, so if you can bring that within the next two weeks and just drop it off in the education building, that would be appreciated, okay? Uh, many other things to announce. Uh, you just keep an eye on the Facebook page. Eric's keeping us up to date. Judy posts the bulletin on the church website. So you can see that. Let, let me tell you this so you don't forget. Uh, WOM's putting on a baby shower for Emily. We're getting, getting close to having a baby, so that'll be Thursday, September 22nd at 6.30 in the gym. Just registered at Target and Amazon, so you go buy them some stuff that they need, okay? All hearts and minds clear. Judy? Uh, yes, prayer, prayer week for the Golden State Mission offering. Those prayer guides are on the back table, so if you grab those on your way out, and then our giving day is the 18th. I believe that's the Sunday that that's on, okay? next Sunday. Prayer week's this week. Amen. All right. All right. All hearts and minds clear. All right. I love you. See you tonight. Good day and God bless you.